Jim Fallon, Jim Fallon, it's your cousin, Cotton Pete. How y'all feeling out there? I pray all is well. In the name of Allah, that by not the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. The Benesafet, the merciful, vast of day of judgment. The alone that we serve and the alone that we seek help. Lord, like God is on the right path, the path upon those who have bestowed favors, not upon those whose wrath is brought down, nor those who go straight. For surely praise and magnify it. Amen. How y'all feeling out there, man? This is a testimony. This is a testimony to growing into a wisdom that God permits you to have when you go through the trials of trouble, when you go through the trials of agony and pain. In every lesson, you learn something. In every lesson, come an understanding and it comes knowledge that turns into wisdom. As I reflect on my children, right? I am not the same father I was 20 years ago. I am not the same father I was 20 years ago. My mindset was different. The atmosphere and the environment was different. The set of circumstances that, that, that influenced my life were different than what it is today. Um, as I stated, I'm not perfect, but I'm active and I'm present. I'm maturing into the man that God intended for me to be and I'm still growing. I went through trial and tribulation with children's mothers that led to me and my children having um, I would say dysfunctional uh, you know relationship but I just want to say that because of the mother and the father have differences child takes on the mother's energy and behavior and she become that with the teacher she become that what her mother is towards you and maybe then I wasn't wise enough to know how to handle certain certain situations or circumstances back then when I was in the game checking channel like a food inspector. I assumed that money will solve everything. I knew the challenges of responsibilities because I've been on my own since the 11th grade in my own two-bedroom apartment uh, paying bills and had established myself as an adult even in my teenager years. What made me an adult? Having to be responsible to myself and my living arrangements. Having, you know, and so the choices and decisions I made as a young dude may have affected my relationship with my children, some of my children, along with the, dis, the dissatisfaction that the mother may have had towards me because I might have ended up cheating or I might have ended up leaving or what they wanted I didn't want no more. And so, the children is affected by that type of behavior with the mothers and the father. More so the mother because the mother is the first teacher of that child. And the, 
that child takes on the attributes and energy of that mother in her spiteful, uh, bitter ways when you actually separate and you have another situation. And I strongly believe that this happened to a lot of individuals in my era, which is some of us wasn't taught how to be a father. We didn't know how to be a father. We were fashioned and shaped and molded by our environment in which we lived. Whether it was Berkeley, whether we go to Oakland, wherever we go, the fight was the same, just in a different spot or a different city. So during this trial, if you notice, our children, some of, we may have some children that we still are, are in disagreement with based on the childhood um, differences. But understanding a child raising a child, I don't want those that are affected by their grown adult children's um, those that are affected by the behavior of their grown adult children's lashing out. Because your children know not what you have been through, nor do your children know the trial. And, and furthermore, your children ain't qualified to be dishonorable in any manner. They set themselves up for failure with God himself when a child is dishonorable in any manner, says Holy Quran in Scripture. But their trial and their turn is coming as well. Don't be, although it affects us men when we don't have great relationships with our older children, based on what we've been through, based on what the mother uh have um have influenced the child with whether she was keeping the child away whether she assassinated the father's character all those things to destroy the fabric of a relationship mothers have done mothers have done. Accountability is real. Sometimes we got to take responsibility for our actions, mothers. Because now you see that same daughter in the streets hoeing, in the streets dealing with multiple men, in the streets with no morals, no value, no values, no principles. It's because parents represents balance. Parents represents balance. And when you pour all of yourself in the cup and give to your child to drink, she has all of your insecurities, all of your flaws, all of your hangups, all of your principles. But it's off balance when the father hasn't poured his half in the, his half in the cup that she may have structure, that she may have discipline, that she may have morals, that she may have guidance, that she may be able to come to her father in a time of need or trouble. She feel guilty to do so because of what you have done and your influence to destroy the fabric of your father-daughter relationship based on the mother having resentment against the father. Now you see the reflection of your son or you see the reflection of your daughter and it's because it's unbalanced. 
And for every action, there's a reaction. I'm here to tell y'all, dear family, I'll be the first one to admit that I went through those trials, overcome some of those trials, and still to this day, I'm fighting a trial. Because I influenced my children's mind with money, but wasn't there present in the younger years. I thought money would solve everything since I was getting so much in them streets. Mama needed a car for the kids, there you go. Mama needed the bill paid, there you go. The kids need school clothes, there you go. The kids need food, there you go. The kids need games, there you go. The kids need bikes, there you go. Providing all the material necessities of one's want, but never providing the necessities of what the children needed was the flaw in me because I was influenced by my environment of believing the streets was my best friend. And although the streets did provide my family and my children and myself with beautiful homes, nice cars, money, Nice birthdays. Ultimately. Allowing us to be comfortable. But when I seen. The behavior of my children. At about 13 years old. I said I got to. I got to change the dynamic of, of. Of my relationship with them. Because. I look like the money man. I was the money man. They didn't give a shit about nothing but put the money. Listen to me, dear family. Your cousin be going somewhere. And so I took back the money and tried to provide my time. They wasn't accustomed to the time. They wasn't accustomed to the time. They was only accustomed to what their mother had said about me because of bitterness of leaving the situation and they were accustomed to the money provided because they grew into that idolizing that energy because money is spiritual money will make you kill people hate people fall out with your own mama your own daddy it has an energy to it it can make you happy it can make you smile and it can make you cry. So understanding that money is spiritual. Money develop. Money develop my children. Spiritually. And believing that. That was more important than me. The Asiatic black man. The maker. The owner. The cream of the planet. Of the God of the universe. But I created that monster. And when I tried, when I, when I was done walking like a boy and talking like a boy and acting like a boy and put away those childish things that became that man that God intended for me to be, I went through another trial of shutting completely down and shut my kids completely off financially into the behavior changed into respecting who I am as their father. Now these are some of my old son of the oldest children. And that was a trial of two to three years. So I had to break everything down in this original form, burn it to the ground and then rebuild the wasted city of love built the waste of city of time I replaced the money with time I replaced the money with love I replaced the money with conversations I replaced the money with knowledge 
I replace the money being supportive. And after that, I reestablished what I wanted as a man and what I wanted as a parent. A father-daughter relationship, a father-son relationship. I have great relationships with my sons to this day. They know what I represent now. I'm talking about sons. They know I represent structure. They know I represent morals. They know I represent principles. They know I'm governed by a spiritual foundation. They know that I'm supportive. They know that I'm present. They know that I'm active. And they know what I got zero tolerance for as well. So that trial of relearning my children and my children relearning me, you're gonna have to go through that dear family. For those who struggle with their children, because your children are watching your conduct and your character. And when I learned in my younger days, they don't give a damn about the money, they give a damn about time. So the time is very important. If you ain't got a penny to give, the, the time will prevail. You heard me? And then you have children that think they know everything but know nothing. You have children that think they know the streets but know nothing. So now they want to smoke their weed. Some want to drink. Some want to um, do live their life the way they see fit. You got children like that. I ain't the only one. How do you combat that? How do you live with those children that think they traveling down this world, this road of uncertainty to them, but knowledgeable to us because we've been their age, they ain't never been ours. And we, when we give them that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to stray away from that idea, to stray away from that road and what you doing, they think you don't know what you're talking about. I had a conversation with my son the other day and I told him straight up for every action there's a reaction every whatever you whatever situation you place yourself in there's something that come with that so if you claim in the streets there's something that comes with that. It's compatible with that. If you're smoking weed and drinking, there's something that comes with that. None conducive to your growth as a young man. But all of it is targeted to destroy you. Whether you think that is going to destroy you or not the one thing we do know about energy is anything that stays consistent eventually dies if you drinking consistently it's going to ultimately kill you in some form some fashion if you're smoking consistently it's going to kill you in some form some fashion so while the children think that they can handle the weed. They can handle the drink. They can handle the club. They can handle multiple men. They can handle the disrespect of their parents. They, they know it all. Anything that stays the same ultimately dies. Did you, 
the children don't understand that respect is earned and love is the emotion that comes and goes depending on what you do to me children have to understand that whatever actions they cause whatever lack of understanding they have and they do something to a parent that's unacceptable you die in the eyesight of your parents. What do you mean, Cousin P? What do you mean that the children die in the eyesight? See, because usefulness determines your value. We as, our, as parents, we observe our children. We see the weaknesses, we see the strengths. We see the disrespect. We see the highs and we see the lows. We see whether or not we could trust them or whether or not we cannot. We observe everything about our children. So what I mean by the child dying in the eyesight of the parent is by their actions. Their actions can produce a chemical imbalance that worry us that we can't trust them. Can you trust your daughter driving your car? Can you trust leaving money home and your daughter taking care of your bills can you trust it or, 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 or not so what I mean by dying in the eyesight of a parent is the parent ability to observe what her son or daughter is I told my son like I said the other day I had a conversation with my son. I said, dear family, I can't protect nothing that I can't control. I can't protect nothing I can't control. As my 16 year old boy, there's a responsibility that I am obligated to you. And the word responsibility, you have the word respond. I have to watch your movement, watch your decision making. And when I see a red flag, I am to respond effectively to fear you away from danger and put you in the best situations or give you a different perspective of, rather than your young mind said I'm responsible so if I tell you don't go down that road they shooting and you go anyway I told you once before I can't protect anything that I can't control if you cannot be given A different understanding than your own. If you cannot be given a discipline to govern yourself better than what you govern yourself, if you cannot be told to stop doing something because ultimately it's going to affect me and you and our family, and you continue to do it, and for every action, there's an opposite but same reaction and you are either shot, beat up, robbed. I told you, don't go down that road because that road has many traps. How do you know, daddy, they got many traps? I've been on every, I've been on the blocks. I ran from the task force. I fought throughout my life. I traveled the damn world. I know what I'm talking about. I did a lot growing up in my younger age. And as my daddy used to tell me, I've been your age. You ain't never been mine. 
So you can't tell me nothing as of yet. So I had that conversation with him. And he went out and did some shit that God used pain. Sometimes God welcomes you to pain since you hard headed. Hitting your knee on the on a hitting your knee on a on the coffee table ain't good enough for you. So God welcome to you, welcome you to more pain. Sometimes embarrassment. That you may change from your wicked ways, your stubborn ways, your egotistical ways, your prideful ways, your arrogant ways, because all of, of those attributes are diseases for destruction. So God uses pain to grow you. This is why the baby is in the womb of mother for nine months and the mother goes through pain as the baby grows and develops. And this is why when the baby is born, the mother and father go through pain of sleep deprivation to help you ultimately grow. So pain represents growth. When your body is hurting, God is so magnificent that he alarmed the body with a pain me mechanism. And that pain is telling you or indicating to you something is wrong. Fix it. Before that pain grow on you And ultimately take you out Correct So Pain Represents growth And so I told my son Obviously, the example that you see before your eyes is not good enough. The trial and tribulation I've been through is not good enough. The wisdom and knowledge that I've given you is not good enough. The only thing I could do at this point is let God deal with it. What do you mean, Cousin P? Well, everything that we see with our eyes is a reflection of God himself. Even the streets is a reflection of God himself. Every mindset you see on our planet is an idea from God himself. Did you know that? Any type of idea you play with, you could enhance it. Whether it's evil or good. But ultimately, the ideas are from God himself. What choices would you make? So I said, I'll let God teach you, which represent this mask universe that we live in called life. So the growing pains of life has to teach some of our children. And we just pray that God guides them. The dysfunctional relationships that we have with our daughters. When they engage with in relationships and they get their heart broke. When they engage in relationships and find out that the baby daddy they chose what no good when they engage in relationships as they get older they start to see the mother's behavior they start to see the father's behavior they start to see who is who 
after they have grown out of this immature mindset, they start to recognize who was fake and who was real. Mothers, be careful on how you handle your children in regards to the other parent. Because you set your daughter and your son up for failure where the daughter is so insecure that she has destroyed the fabric of her relationship with her father and can't go back to her father for the guidance that God put in that man. So she looks for her guidance from a nigga that she met off the streets. Come on, talk to me. She looked for her guidance from her uncle that's a dope head. Come on, talk to me. She looked for her guidance from her aunties that have don't have the same values as her father. So she stuck wallowing and vomit going around in circles and not producing nothing for herself because she don't have the other half of herself, which is her father. And it's only because your snake tongue as a young child 